thank you, Jeff. Uh, I'm happy you enjoyed the demo. Uh, all of you are going to see it very soon. Uh, so I'm challenging you to play the doppelganger game with me uh, today. And for those of you who don't know what a doppelganger is, basically um, it's uh, when you find someone uh, that looks very, very similar to you. And in this case today, uh, instead of finding someone that looks very, very similar to us or to you, uh, we're actually going to build an application that looks very similar, that checks whether uh, your picture looks very similar to an 80s character, because that's the theme of the conference. That's awesome, right? Cool. So I'm going to go back here. I wish I had a bigger stage. <laughs> Okay, so this is how the application looks like. It's an Angular application, a very, a very simple one, uh, and uh, you can upload a picture um, by just pressing that button, and you can see that uh, here, <laughs> Sam <laughs> looks a lot like her mother, like 95% to be precise, or 97, which is great. It's a confirmation, but then our friend Burke here uh, I think he's happy to learn that he looks 95% like Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> so you can already see how fun this game is going to be. And you're going to be able to try this application yourself. Awesome. So my name is Simona, not Asim. Uh, Simona Kotin, and I work as a developer advocate at Microsoft. And my role there is to help build a great developer experience in the cloud for everyone here and everyone that's a web developer out there. Uh, if you have any questions about uh, Azure or JavaScript or Angular or whatever, uh, if you ever are in London and I happen to be around, uh, make sure to tweet at me and we can go out for coffee or whatever. Okay, uh, the next game that's going to be very interesting today is the Tech Talk Bingo. So we're going to cover things like machine learning and serverless and blockchain. No. <laughs> or, and uh, Angular, actually, it's not a buzzword, but uh, still, we're going to look at a bit of Angular there as well. So make sure to keep score, and uh, at the end, I can share some stickers, some cool stickers with you. First episode. Bum, 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 bum. I wish we had music. Uh, this, is, <laughs> this is a poem that has been generated by an AI system uh, that has been fed thousands of unpublished uh, romantic poems. And if you read between the lines, you can see that it's not very happy. <laughs> so I'm just wondering, what's our perspective on love and romantic life? Well, this is what AI thinks it is. And as I mentioned, we're going to talk about machine learning, and actually, I am not a machine learning expert. I have just uh, challenged myself to kind of figure out how far can I go with existing APIs and existing services uh, that are available out there to build an application that uses machine learning. So just so that we are all on the same page, I'm not sure how many of you uh, are uh, machine learning experts? Maybe one hand, Jeff? I don't think so. <laughs> well, you're going to be one after my talk. <laughs> okay, so machine learning is a data science technique that allows computers to use existing data to forecast future behaviors, outcomes, and trends. So this is basically um, where kind of computers have the ability to predict the future. And if we were to think of this application where we're trying to recognize faces, um, in a traditional computing approach, we, what we would do is um, have uh, thousands of if, ifs and elses uh, to kind of figure out whether someone's faces look similar to another one. And if we want to take a simple, uh, simpler example, we can think of um, an orange. Uh, compared to a cookie, right? If you were to compare these uh, in a traditional approach, what kind of properties would you check for? Uh, Tara? Chocolate chips. Chocolate chips. <laughs> would you check whether the cookie the, it has chocolate chips? Yeah, perfect. And then color, that's another test. Uh, but what happens if your picture is black and white? Sorry. Right? You have to add a new you have to add a new uh, test there. And what happens if the orange has been an orange for a lot of months and it doesn't look like an orange anymore? It, you, you, you'd have to like, add a lot of tests. It's still an orange, right? 
Um, so that's what machine learning actually helps us with. It helps us um, train all those characteristics that are uh, very like, small, you might not notice as a human, but a computer is able to uh, look at those characteristics and train them to be, uh, like, to be fast and accurate. So, we start with the machine learning algorithm. There's a lot of them out there. If you're interested in learning more about machine learning, you can go check out. There's a lot of scientific publications with different types of machine learning algorithms. Uh, but what's important here is that we, we start with some data, and that data uh, runs through a machine learning algorithm, and a model is being created. And then we can use that model to uh, like send in new data, and that but uh, it will help us uh, get, like, predict some results, understand um, things about our data. And in our case, we're gonna have pictures of 80s characters, we're gonna train them using a machine learning algorithm, create a model that will be able to match a face to a, a certain uh, 80s character. Okay, so this is like a, a very, um, Turn definition of what a model is, uh, but really what it is, it, it's a mathematical function that kind of uh, describes the relationship between the input and the, the, the features of our input and the, and the output, what we're expecting it to be. So coming back to our doppelganger app, there's three th steps that we want to, uh, that help us take our app further. So the first one is, um, kind of uh, preparing the data. So we need a lot of pictures with uh, 80s uh, characters so that we can feed that into our uh, model. The second step is actually training that model, and not only training that model, but also iterating. So one thing with machine learning is that it never gets it right the first time. You have to work for it. You have to uh, look at your how performant your algorithm is, and only after that kind of um, adjust like add more pictures, add more tags, try to understand how it works. And final step, we can actually use the model. <laughs> and uh, the model deployment, we can use it either as a, an API endpoint or we can even download that model and install it on our phone and use it uh, offline, and that's great. So then, there are a lot of tools out there. As I mentioned, I'm not a machine learning expert, so I kind of started Googling what can I use to build this kind of app. And there's a lot of tools and frameworks out there, TensorFlow or Keras, but my favorite, <laughs> You can guess, it's Azure Cognitive Services. And that's because I have a lot of friends that know how to use Azure Cognitive Services so they can uh, basically get me up to speed the way you can do now. So if you have any questions and you want to learn more, now you know that Simona is able to work with Custom Vision Service so I can help you with that. And what Custom Vision Services is a part of Azure Cognitive Services and it allows us to build custom image classifiers. And I'm gonna give a quick demo of how you can do that. You're gonna see um, that there's a, a few steps. Um, we can use a UI for this. So the first thing that we need is a Microsoft account for this, and um, we can sign in. Um, and once we're there, we're gonna have a dashboard uh, with a list of projects that we've created in the past. And as you'll see soon, I have created a few projects here, mostly for test as well. Uh, so let's give it a name. Let's say it's ng-conf, and because I've already taken the ng-conf one, I'm gonna do it ng-conf two. And then uh, you can uh, select what kind of domain your uh, application is gonna have. So uh, the narrower your domain is, the better it is, because your algorithm is gonna perform better. Uh, but because there's no 80s characters domain, I'm just gonna stick with the general one. So then the next step is this uh, other dashboard where you can do things like add images, check your performance, and train your algorithm. So I'm gonna go ahead and add images, and uh, I've already spent a lot of time downloading uh, images from the internet with 80s characters. So I'm gonna add Luke Skywalker here, uh, and I'm gonna add tags. And what, what this tag is used for, uh, basically our algorithm is gonna go through these images, 
and it's going to know that I've assigned the Luke Skywalker tag to this image. So um, it's important to make sure that you tag your images. And another requirement for custom vision service is that you upload at least five pictures. The more pictures you have, the better it is. And because we also have to want to have a woman here, I'm going to add, who wants to guess? It's too late. <laughs> Come on, Tara, guess. Um, <gasps> yes. You get a sticker. <laughs> so I'm going to upload these pictures. And you can imagine, like now you've seen that uploading these pictures took like maybe a few seconds. But uh, the more pictures we have, the more it will take. Um, so I'm done. And then uh, one of the requirements is also to have at least, two, in order to create a model, you need to have at least two tags and five pictures for each tag. So then next, I can go ahead and train the algorithm. And again, based on how many images you have, this might take uh, three seconds or um, maybe one hour, two hours, whatever, a lot. Um, and I can go ahead and quickly test um, what we've done here. Should we use uh, Burke's image again? Yeah? OK, it's your choice. Burke, get ready for it. 99.9%. percent .9 So, who do you like more? So this is, this is kind of a sign that our algorithm is actually not performing great, right? Because how mu however much Burke would like to look like Leia, I don't think he really looks a lot like her. Um, and we can find information about how good our algorithm is performing right on this screen. So you can see that we have a percentage for precision uh, as well as a percentage for recall. And these two metrics are used to measure your algorithm's performance. And so the precision is basically telling us of all the pictures that have been uh, classified or predicted to be Sky Luke Skywalker, how many of them are actually Luke? And um, we can answer this question because we have uploaded pictures of Luke and then we have tagged those pictures. So whenever the algorithm is training the data, it will be able to go back to our tags and understand uh, how, how that works. And then uh, recall is uh, of the pictures that are actually of Luke Skywalkers. How many have been classified as Luke? Um, and depending on whether precision is important uh, for you or recall, um, you can um, twitch, no, not twitch, tweak. Uh, <laughs> tweak the algorithm to do uh, better or not. Um, so, but before we go into Angular, uh, we can see how uh, we integrated this model or the model that I have actually trained to do more uh, with Angular. So, uh, on this dashboard, we have this uh, button for uh, the prediction URL. And you can see here that um, we can get uh, an endpoint um, uh, or a link to an endpoint that will send us prediction results. And this is the URL that you need to use. And then um, it tells us that we have to set a prediction key in order to authenticate our request. And then we have to set our content type based on whether this is we're sending an image or we're sending an image URL. So this is it. This is everything we need in order to integrate machine learning into our Angular application. So I'm going to go back to my slides and show you um, the request uh, that I've made. As you can imagine, I, I created an um, Angular service that basically um, t makes a request to this URL that we've seen earlier. Um, and then um, it sets the content type to image. It also includes the prediction key. Um, yeah, I've, I've hidden it here because I knew Brian is going to be here. And Brian is our security expert. He would judge me. And then I posted this image uh, to the URL we've created earlier uh, with the, the headers. And finally, I am showing this picture uh, in an image element and uh, using an input um, uh, element to upload the image. And that's pretty much everything. So goal achieved. 
we have uh, SAM, look, we have our application ready. Uh, but as I mentioned, we do, we, we only had two pictures there, right? And you've seen that I had to manually, um, you didn't see me uh, Google well, or searching for those images, but you did see me uh, having them in my local and uploading them manually, creating the, um, the tags manually. And um, as you want to train the model to be better, uh, you can imagine trying to upload maybe um, 30 tags and upload five pictures for each of the tags. So that's 150 things to do. <laughs> and uh, it kind of scares me thinking that I, I have to do that. It's, all, it's days of work, right? Uh, so I was thinking that, you know what? There has to be a way to automate this. And um, of course there is. Right? Uh, the cognitive, the custom service, the custom vision service uh, has an API that allows us to upload uh, image URLs, as we've seen earlier. And not only one, but upload them in, uh, in arrays. And another type of service that cognitive services has is a Bing API or a Bing search API, which means that we can use an API, uh, we can make an API call to search for images. Does that kind of <laughs> makes it more interesting? It does, right? So our tasks would be to, um, instead of downloading images, just um, search for some images based on a term and get that list of URLs. And once we have that list of URLs, just upload it, um, it to our uh, machine learning uh, model and train that model. So as I mentioned, these are all HTTP requests. And you can see here that um, I've just uh, taken the, the API, the URL for the API endpoint, uh, set a query there, and also um, um, key. And I get back a JSON object that contains a huge list of images. And it has a lot of properties, but the ones that I'm really interested in is a content URL, for example, because I want to send the URLs. And the next, the next thing that I mentioned we want to do is uh, post uh, these, this array of images to the Cognitive Services uh, API. And we can do that. Again, it's an HTTP request. We have a URL there. We are submitting um, a request, a post request using a key. And uh, we are submitting the list of URLs um, and the tag ID. And I'm going to introduce you. We can do this in many ways. So um, that's um, like adding everything into Postman that's still very manual, right? Uh, we actually want to do this in a programmatical way. And you can do this in many ways, but my one of my favorite technologies is serverless. Who here has worked with serverless? I see a lot of hands. I'm happy to see that. Um, so for those of you who haven't worked with serverless, basically serverless applications are applications that depend heavily on third-party applications. Like for example, if you were to um, um, add authentication into your application, instead of re-implementing re it yourself, you can use uh, services like Auth0. Uh, and the other part of uh, serverless is uh, the ability to write custom code. So many times you actually, when you're building a new application, you need to write your own code. And you can do that using functions, and that's called function as a service. And there's three things that are important with serverless. The first thing is that it reacts to events. So our code is stored somewhere uh, in a storage account. And um, we listen to uh, events like HTTP events, or a message has been added on a queue, or a file has been uploaded in a storage account. So once that happens, um, our code is being deployed in a container in the cloud, our dependencies are being uh, installed, and your code is going to run. And once everything's done, your code goes back to being um, like stored somewhere in the cloud. Um, so that's reacting to event. It also auto scales. The, co the cloud provider takes care of that for us. And finally, uh, we only pay for the memory and CPU that we're using while our code is running, which is great. We pay less money. Perfect. So I mentioned that we have to run two tasks, right? Get the list of URLs and also uh, submit that list of URLs to uh, the Cognitive Services API. Well. Uh, in my world, that's two functions. Uh, one function is sending a request to the Bing uh, image search API, and this is it. 
And the other one is sending uh, the list of URLs to the training API. But because our functions need to be triggered by something, um, I, I chose to use a queue to do that. So basically, I'm uh, sending a message containing Lorraine Baines to a queue, and once that message is saved on the queue, immediately our code starts running, is being triggered. And it's gonna make a request to Bing um, searching for Lorraine Baines images can, um, with Lorraine Baines. And uh, once that request is submitted, then I'm gonna add a new message on a new queue, uh, adding that list of URLs. So um, you can already see where this is going, right? And this is, if you're wondering, for those of you who haven't seen functions, um, this is familiar code, this is JavaScript. Um, we are just creating a function that receives two parameters. One of them is the context object that's used to interact with the, uh, the function's runtime. And the other one is the queue item, which is just a message, it's a string. And then what we're doing is we're creating a request, we're sending a request uh, to the Bing search API and sending that um, queue item and we're choosing to return an uh, image. Okay, so this is, uh, this is the second function. I haven't included the, the entire code because I guess that it already uh, makes sense. Um, you understand where this is going. So we're just creating an HTTP request where we're um, asking for, uh, we're, we're saving the URLs, um, we're sending the URLs to the Custom Vision API. So that's the uh, API URL, then we're, setting, we're authenticating our request, and then we are sending the tags and the URLs. So we've managed to build this. It was very fast. And now, <laughs> Blurk is actually happy. He doesn't look like Leia anymore. He actually looks like Arnold Schwarzenegger. And if you want to try this yourself, which I recommend you do, like now, <laughs> You have to go to uh, aka.ms slash 80s and you can submit your own picture or a friend's picture um, and you're gonna see uh, like who, what, to which 80s characters uh, you, you resemble. If you want to learn more about this, uh, then um, please go to the GitHub repositories that I've published with the code for this um, application, as well as if you want to learn more about Azure Functions or Azure Custom Vision Service, just go to those URLs and um, feel free to ask questions on Twitter or even here around um, the conference. I'm happy to chat with all of you. Thank you.